What's going on, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to do an overview of the Dark Horse manga, I Am a Hero. I'm going to give a really quick synopsis about the series and the characters without giving any spoilers away, but focus more on the build of the books and what is out so far and how many more we expect. So please stay tuned. And welcome back, Minties. Now, before I get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Kate and the folks at Dark Horse for sending me some of these copies to do an overview of. Right off the bat, you can tell that the spines themselves don't have a collage of a picture, uh, very much in the way that I was hoping like uh, Vagabond did with their uh, Vis Big editions. So speaking of which, I am going to talk a little bit about the book and the story and focus more on the build of the book. So these are what are called the two-in-one omnibuses. Originally, these were released in Japan, Japan as 23 individual manga books. So your standard size, like, for example, I'll use Gantz. These are two-in-ones, and then Gantz is your standard size trade paperback of a manga size. Um, Gantz is about 200 pages, whereas the volume, the first volume of I Am A Hero is 464 pages. Now, the price is a little bit more. It is $19.99. But then again, you're also paying about $12 to $15 for each of these, $12 to $14 for each of the standard ones. So this is a better deal. Now I'm going to compare it to the size of another manga by Dark Horse. This is another omnibus collection here. This is Legal Drug. And as you can tell, Legal Drug is a little bit taller and just a tad bit longer, wider rather. You know, about the same thickness, but... I'm not sure why they decided to make uh, the I Am A Hero a little bit shorter. And also, shorter than your standard trade. Not sure why, but that's the way it looks compared to the Gantz, and that's the way it looks in between Gantz and Legal Drug. Now let's compare it to another uh, edition of books. that This is by Viz. This is the Viz uh, Big Edition. Of course, Dragon Ball Z. Um, they've had several. They've had what I had mentioned before vagabond they've had fushigi yugi um what else have they had kenshin and hot gimmick evangelion so yeah it's, it's obviously taller it's it's big and now let's compare it to these beautiful of course this is completely unfair because berserk is 49.99 $49.99 Whereas I Am Hero, each one of these is retailed at $19.99. Now let's look at the book itself. What I enjoy about these is right off the bat, color. I love when they put color in manga that was originally supposed to be there. And they leave it as it instead of that white washing that they do with some of the manga. I know Tokyo Pop was notorious for that. Now I Am Hero is a manga that was originally published in 2009. And it finally came out here in America in 2016. Dark Horse first brought the first omnibus here in 2016. This is probably my second time with a reread. And as you can see, the spine has no crease. And that's what I look forward to. Because some of these books, uh, like I'm trying to think of like the Kadansha Last Order, the Battle Angel Alita Last Order. That book's after two rereads, it started creasing a little bit. And I get worried about that. Because when you get books this thick, Paperbacks just don't cut it, but for some reason, two-in-ones are nice. Um, so, very, very short synopsis. The story is about this guy right here. And this guy right here, his name is Hideo Suzuki. He's a 35-year-old manga artist. You know what? He's not even a manga artist. He is a manga assistant artist uh, whose life just seems to suck. He is working at this low-paying job. His dreams of becoming a manga artist and just blowing up are unfulfilled. And he has a girl, he has a relationship with a girlfriend that is still obsessed with her ex-boyfriend, or so he thinks. And he himself sees himself as a supporting character in his own story. Which is kind of weird and made it difficult to read, I'm not going to lie. He's also paranoid, and this is what I'm going to talk about right here is he's paranoid and he has visions of, I thought were ghosts or poltergeists that were haunting him. But it turns out that he's he's not schizophrenic, he's just paranoid. So he sees visions of people and he has conversations with them. So much so that his own co-workers are like, hey dude, can you please uh, tone it down? You know, you're talking to yourself again and it's getting annoying. Now half the book is about focusing and setting up his life and his girlfriend's life. I'm going to showcase uh, another book here. 
try not to give any spoilers away. What I knew about the series, though, was that it was going to be kind of a post-apocalyptic zombie uh, manga. And that's not what I got at the beginning. I got this really boring, drawn-out story about a guy that is miserable and making everyone around him uh, feel miserable. So that's the story Hideo. Now, halfway through the book, something happens uh, in the first book. So it would have been volume two in Japan where everything changes. And even the pacing of the books uh, of the story changes where it picks up the pace so much because there is a zombie apocalypse happening. And it's pretty interesting how he deals with it because he himself does not believe that it's happening because he's, like I said, paranoid and he has hallucinations and he knows that he has these things. There's no way my coworkers are becoming zombies. There's no way that this is actually happening. So you can tell a little bit from here. This is a page I wanted to showcase. There is a little bit of gutter loss and it's not very much. For a book this thick, it's not very much. But when you have a book this thick, you're gonna have a little bit of gutter loss art. And that's when you lose a little bit of the art right down there. Uh, so it only, you know, most of the time, there's not that many splash pages in the series. But when it happens, you can tell. Now, when it comes to panels, they're fine. They're completely fine. The panels look great. Um, but yeah, it's the story of Hideo. And along the way, he meets other characters, such as Hiromi here, which he runs into the suicide forest. Uh, but one of my favorite characters, or one of my favorite stories that I read so far, was, I believe, in uh, Omnibus Volume 4, where he goes to the mall, and he meets Yabu... Oh, what is her name? Yabu Oda, who was a nurse at one time but then in the story like they go to this mall and it's ran by a bunch of young people and it's kind of like they're taking a dictatorship uh, over the old people they're feeding old people very little and she is now no longer a nurse but she is more of a sex slave because like I said these young guys just run the mall and it's an awesome story and an awesome look at society I thought it was uh, phenomenal in a great way to tell it now not gonna lie, the pacing of the book is still a little bit slow, and I can understand why some people just would give up on it after volume one. But, if you keep up with it, the series becomes so freaking awesome. It's a zombie series that I haven't seen done in manga. Yeah, you know, we have stories here like Walking Dead, and other stories by Rick Remender in his crawl space, and, and um, you know, there have been a, other manga series that i've read but they're kind of goofy and over the top like the high school of the dead series that it's just very cheesecakey this isn't this is serious this is a very serious take on the zombie apocalypse and let me showcase in volume one because i don't want to spoil what happens later on i just wanted to show you all a little bit of the art when it comes to the zombies and it's a pretty interesting take on zombies because they can run so very much like 28 days later but what's interesting is, if you can see here, this is uh, the manager at one of the apartment complexes, and he can talk. So they have some kind of remembrance of their past lives, and I thought that was a pretty interesting take on a zombie story. Uh, the sound effects are translated within the panel, so that's really nice. You don't have to look back in the back um, for translations. It can be done in one. And the artwork by Kingo Kanasawa I find really awesome. It varies from realistic to these kind of facial expressions right here, which I like to call the, uh, what is it, the Tekon Kinkrete, the Matsumoto black and white manga that came out by Viz, or published here in America by Viz, because they are just goofy, but then, like, I love the way that he draws the zombies, because they are creepy, especially when there's panels that are just um, close-ups of the zombies, like how veiny they are. Here, let me show you when it's colored. Like this particular panel right here. You can tell the veins on the arm. I love the detail that it went into drawing the veins and just how gross it looks. Now let's talk about the paper quality. Uh, the paper isn't glossy. It is your standard type of paper that you find in manga that is $9.99. And another thing that you'll notice with a book this thick, it's not going to stand and sit there and stay while you're reading the book. It will end up closing on you. So bookmarks are important when you're reading a book this thick. Uh, the bind, like I said, the spine hasn't broken. It's just glued binding, but it's hold, held on very well. And other than the gutter loss, I have no issues with it. I'm glad that, yeah, there's no crease, which is nice to see in a book this thick. Okay, now let's bring out a little more of the artwork from the later part of the series. 
Now, Hanazawa only did 23 volumes, like I said. But yeah, there were also spin-off uh, Gaiden uh, stories. But I don't think they were part of the manga. I think they were just stories. So if there's 23 of them, there should be a total of 12 volumes of this. You have uh, Omnibus 11 has been solicited for November. We don't have a volume 12 yet, but I mean, I'm sure that Dark Horse is going to publish that. They're not going to end up canceling it. Just wanted to showcase a little bit of the art here towards the later series. It remains the same, but just a little bit more details. Uh, it seems like the backgrounds have gotten a little more, let's see, realistic, I guess, which I always enjoyed, but it looks like he's got some help doing the art now. And look at the final volume that's out so far. It's a very creepy. I thought this was Attack on Titan, honestly, when I saw the cover. I like the way that the characters are glossy and the background is just this uh, dull color tone. And they do that with every one of the covers. Um, oh, yeah, this is where it gets to the Silent Hill looking creatures. Um, very weird and messed up is the way that I can describe it. But that's his artwork. That is uh, Hanazawa's artwork as a whole. Now, this is a series I think a lot of people would really enjoy. Like I said, halfway through volume one, I was bored. And that's just, I don't know. I'm kind of glad I pushed myself because I knew the zombies were coming. And I wanted to see how this bland character that doesn't see himself as a hero reacts to these zombies. One of my favorite things that I haven't talked about is that he actually has a license for a shotgun, which is very hard to get in Japan. But for some reason, Hideo has a shotgun which automatically, you know, he's like, oh, I am a hero. I have a gun, right? He knows how to use it because he goes to target practice. <laughs> I don't, I love his character. He got on my nerves at first, but then he grew on me. And the more that I got to know him, the more I sympathize for him, which at the beginning I didn't. I was like, God, I don't want to read about this guy that doesn't even see himself as the main character of his own story. How is he going to interact with these zombies? But it works. It works. Hanazawa made it work. I highly recommend this series. I, I just at least give Volume 1, at all of Volume 1, a chance. Don't stop halfway through because it is well worth it. And that's it. That's pretty much what makes up I Am A Hero so far. Like I mentioned, the next book, Volume 11, should be out in November. And we should have a total of 12 of these omnibuses. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this series up or if you've been wondering about it. I, for one, really enjoy the series. So let me know in the comments down below if you're still enjoying it or what you think about it. And don't forget to check out our Redbubble store where you can get t-shirts and stickers with our near mint condition logo. And if you enjoy the content of this channel, please think about subscribing and liking the video if you have not yet. And hit that notifications button. As well as joining our Patreon where you get exclusive things like early access to videos and polls for reading orders. And behind the scene videos. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near myth.